Hello and welcome to another video with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this getting to know Webcore video, we will be setting up a piston that will notify us if any battery powered device is reporting a low battery or if a device is being reported as offline. The notification will be sent once a day at the same time if any device is reported as having a low battery or is being offline. In a recent video, I covered how I used leak sensors and a smart water valve to help protect my home against floods. Of course, since that video, I did have a leak sensor die and between the time of the battery dying and me checking it, I had a small issue with my sink above the water sensor that took me a bit of time to notice. Had the sensor battery been replaced in a timely manner, then I wouldn't have had a giant mess to clean up. Luckily, it didn't do any real damage, but it was a reminder for why it's important to make sure any device running on batteries are still powered. I also want to be notified if a device is offline as well, as I do have devices that are plugged into power that I rely on. The piston itself will use a handful of local variables and a few simple if statements that will be triggered every day at the same time. Let's get started by creating a new blank piston and giving it a name. Once ready, click on Create. Let's first create our local variables. For this piston, we will need four device type variables and two string text type variables. If you do not see a defined section where you can add a new variable, you can either click on the Show Variables icon on the left, or you can click on the checkbox next to Show Variables on the right under Options. To create a new variable, click on Add a New Variable. From here, click the blue drop down menu that says Dynamic, and then select the variable type. We are going to create our four device type variables first. So we will first select the type device and give it a name. The four device type variables we will be creating are Online Status Monitoring, Battery Status Monitoring, Offline Devices, and Low Battery Devices. They can be created in any order and we will circle back to the ones that need to be populated after creating all of our six variables. After the variable type and name are set, you can click on Add More to add the one you just created and also stay on the screen to create more. After the four device type variables are created, we will need to create two string type variables. They will be called low battery list and offline device list. Both of these will be populated through the piston and will not be set with any values. On the last variable, you can click on add instead of add more to add the last variable and be brought back to the piston editor. Let's now take a look at our six variables and how they will be used in our piston. The first is battery status monitoring. This variable will be set by us and include any devices that we want to monitor the battery life of. To update the devices in this variable, click on it. And on the new screen that opens, click on the bottom left drop down menu to select physical devices. We'll then select all the devices we want to monitor the battery status on by clicking on them in the drop down on the right. Once all the devices you want to monitor are selected, click on save to go back to the piston editor. The second variable is online status monitoring. This variable will be set by us and include any devices that we want to monitor the status of. You do not need to worry about selecting any battery powered devices here, as we will be using our first variable to keep track of those devices as well as for their status. To update the devices in this variable, click on it, and then on the new screen that opens, click on the bottom left drop down menu to select physical devices. We'll then select all the devices we want to monitor on the drop down menu on the right. Once all the devices you want to monitor are selected, click on save to go back to the piston editor once more. The device variables, offline devices, and low battery devices will be used by the piston itself to keep track of devices that are either offline or have low battery. Because of that, we will not be setting anything in these variables. The two string variables, low battery list and offline device list, are also going to be used by the piston itself to help build or push notifications. These variables will also be left blank. For this piston example, I'm going to have it run once a day at 10 a.m., but you can have it run several times a day or on specific days only if you want. To do this, click on Add a New Statement under Execute, and then click on Add a Timer on the new screen that opens. Again, you can set this to whatever you want, as it'll be what triggers the checking, but for me, I'm going to do it once a day at 10 a.m. With your time value set as you want, click on Add a Statement. On the new window that opens, click on Add an If. And then from here, click on Add a Condition. 
Our first if block will be if any of our battery powered devices we are monitoring are at or below 15% reported battery life. So for this condition, we will first select our battery status monitoring variable, which will be at the bottom of the physical device list. And for the drop down next to it, we will select battery. For what kind of comparison, we will select from the drop down is less than or equal to, and we will set the value to 15. You can set this number to whatever you want, but I find that 15% is enough time for me to make sure I have spare batteries available for when the device does finally die. Before saving, we actually need to enable an advanced setting for this condition, and we will do so by clicking on the cog next to save. This will give us a few additional options, and for this piston, we will select store the list of matching devices in variable, and select our low battery devices variable. With our value set and the advanced option set, click on add. You'll notice here, for the condition, it says any of battery status monitoring's battery is less than or equal to 15%. This is because we are using a variable for this condition and as long as any of the devices that are in the variable are less than or equal to 15% for their battery, it will be evaluated as true. We will also take any device that happens to be true from this evaluation and save them to their own variable. This will allow us to manipulate and work with those specific devices later in the piston. Let's now set what will happen if the condition is evaluated as true for this if statement. For this if block, we will take two actions. The first is to convert the devices that are in our low battery variable to a variable we can use as part of our message, and the second is to actually send a message saying which devices have low battery. We'll start by clicking on add a new statement under them. On the new window that opens up, click on add an action. Next, leave the drop down at location and click on add a task. After, click on the blue drop down and search for set variable. For variable, we will be selecting our string variable called low battery list. Under value, first change the drop down from value to variable and then select our low battery devices variable. Next, click on add more to add our second action. From here, search for push notification. You can do SMS if you want, but you will need to be in a supported region and also have already accepted the terms and conditions for SmartThings texting. So for this video, we will be using push notifications. Under message, we will put in what we want to be in our notification if one is sent. For me, I'll have the devices counted that have a low battery and also list them out. I'll have exactly what I have in my notification in the description below, so you can easily copy it if you want to. Take note that it does call my variables by name, so you will need to make sure they match yours or update them as needed. If you want the message to show up in your message history within the SmartThings app, you'll also need to set store and messages to true. And for this piston we will. With everything set, click on add to go back to the piston editor. The second if block will be for devices we want to monitor the online status of. To create this if block, click on add new statement between end if and end every and then click on add an if on the new screen that opens. Next, click on add a condition, and for this condition, we will be selecting the variable called online status monitoring, as well as our battery status monitoring variable. And for this attribute, we will be selecting status. Make sure the status selected is the one with the dollar sign in front of it. For comparison, we will be selecting is not any of. For compare to, select expression, and we will be searching for both online and active. Before saving, we actually need to enable an advanced setting for this condition, and we will do so by clicking on the cog next to save. This will give us a few additional options, and for this piston, we will select store the list of matching devices in variable, and select offline devices. With our value set and the advanced option set, click on add. For this if block, we will be doing the same thing with our string variable and push notification. The only difference will be with the push notification text. I will also have that in the description below if you'd like to copy and paste it. Just remember that you will either need to change the variable names or make sure your names are the same as mine. With our piston set up, let's save it and take a look at everything that it does. At the top, we will find our variables. The first two are used and set by us to indicate which devices we want to monitor the battery life on and which devices we want to monitor the status of. The other four variables are used by the piston to help keep track of things. 
In this piston, we have a single trigger, which is our timer, and in this piston example, it is triggered every day at 10 a.m. The timer itself will trigger two if blocks. The first will evaluate the battery status of every device within our variable, and if any have a battery level reported equal to or lower than 15, they will be added to a different variable. This variable is then used to generate a push notification to the SmartThings app, indicating how many and which devices need battery replacement. The second if block evaluates all the devices in both our online status variable as well as our battery monitoring variable, and checks the status of each device. If any device has a status other than active or online, it is recorded in a different variable and used to generate a push notification to the SmartThings app indicating how many devices are offline and which ones they are. Let's test out our piston and see how it does. Great, so at the expected time, we get two different notifications listing what devices have low battery and which devices are offline. And if we go into the SmartThings app, we can see in messages the same information as well. I'd love to know about any WebCore pistons you are running, so let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you run into any problems setting up this piston or have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps the video perform better in the YouTube algorithm. And if you aren't already, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first to know and release a new video just like this one. Thank you for watching.